Good evening, everybody. I'm really excited and happy to be here tonight with my friend, uh, Becky Spencer. So uh, I've known Becky for a couple of years. It's just amazing the way that we met. Um, but Becky is a functional medicine health coach. And tonight she's going to share with us uh, her experience with the Freestyle Libra. And she's going to talk a little bit about mindset. You know, that's one of the goals that I wanted us to focus on is why are we doing this? And then let's see how we can be inspired by Becky this evening. Thank you. Yeah, this is this whole thing has been inspiring. You're inspiring all of us. So thank you very much for doing this, Tiffany. It's been amazing. It's been very eye opening for me. I'll just kind of share what I've experienced with the Freestyle Libra first, because I'd never I'd never done it before. I'd wanted to try it so I could, you know, help my clients understand it. But, you know, I needed to understand it first. So it was a perfect time for me to do it. And yeah, it's, it's about awareness really, right? It's about looking at what's going on in your body and understanding your body. And I, I don't know if you can really heal your body and go down that healing journey until you start to understand and you start to have that awareness and you start to really dig in and look and go, what's going on under the hood, right? So for me, it was, you know, um, I have a lot of issues with, uh, some maybe, I don't know if it's snacking or emotional eating or what. There's there's definitely some too many carbs in my life, which I kind of knew. My blood sugar has been fine, you know, and all my lab results. So, you know, I, I was like really happy with that. But, you know, when you see it live and you see it moving around and you're like, it's in your face, you're like, okay, I still have a little issue right there. So, yeah. So just seeing how long it lasts, like when you're having like bread or pasta and how long it's lasting, even after a walk, I thought, you know, doing a walk would really make it come down. And it sometimes it just would stay up for a while. So that was quite interesting. And then also seeing like some nights and I don't really, I didn't really get to the bottom of it. That's why I want to keep going. Some nights it would dip super low. So I know that can affect people's sleep, right? Because when their blood sugar goes down and the adrenaline kicks in, right? So that could be an issue for, for some people with their sleep, but I slept through it. But <laughs> so yeah, it's been very eye-opening and I'm just trying to like figure out where I want to go with this and what I want to, you know, what takeaways I really want to implement. Definitely a lot of the hacks and doing a more ketogenic diet for sure. And I, I've always been one that I want to fast and I do do intermittent fasting, but I want to do some fasting days because now I'm really curious to see what that does. So. Yeah. And I think most people are probably having, you know, those same questions in their head right now is like, what's going to happen next and where do I go from here and, and why, you know, and how is, what is my body really responding? What information did I get from this? So it's, it's kind of, it's part of that adventure, right? It's that adventure of knowledge and that's really what I wanted to have everyone take away from this yeah because when we have knowledge we're empowered yeah and once we have that power you know let's bring it on like take it back we don't need anyone to tell us necessarily what to eat once you start to realize your own patterns and you know for yourself and then you can be the captain of your own ship absolutely yep yeah. and I think when we talk about mindset um what comes up for me the big word is curiosity. Like when you're on a health journey like this, coming from it, not from like, you know, we're told so much, we're, we're bombarded with so much about how we should be eating in this diet and that diet. But if you just come from it as, I'm gonna go down this road and I'm gonna be curious about my body and I'm gonna learn about my body and I'm not gonna come from, you know, what society has been telling me all these years. And I'm really going to see what my own body wants. I'm going to listen to my body. I'm going to keep an open mind. And I think that can get you so much farther than the pressure of we've got to be this way and that way. Cause not nothing, one thing does not work the same for everyone. You know, somebody's poison can be some, something else for, you know, great for someone else, but we all have our own specific food allergies and sensitivities and all these things that cause inflammation in our bodies. And it's figuring out what those things are. So that's the main thing I wanted to say about tonight about mindset is come from a place of curiosity and that will get you so much farther. And it's so interesting that you bring up that point that, 
you know, it's not a one size fits all and that what can apply for one doesn't apply to the other. Because when I first, you know, started following a ketogenic diet, you know, I was super excited about it. Right. And, you know, I thought it was the thing, right. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily, it wasn't a fad for me, but I saw the changes, but then I realized, and I had several people, you know, I had many groups in Canada and, you know, it worked for some, but it didn't work for everybody because, you know, what is that trigger within us? What's making us eat? How does our body respond to certain things? Because even now, you know, some people will say, well, you know, my body doesn't respond really well if I have a high fat diet and that's okay because some bodies don't, right? It's like some bodies don't um, respond well if it's just a completely vegan diet. And, mm -hmm. but if we take off all those labels, <laughs> right? you know, it's whatever it is, it's a vegan, it's a keto, it's the paleo, it's the, you know, the, the low carb, it's let's eat based on body awareness and listening to what your body starts to crave because right. the body, wants, right? Exactly. And sometimes it's not even food. Sometimes it's craving water, you know, sometimes you're just de dehydrated and yeah, it, it, everybody's different. So you really have to, you have to really go down that road of figuring out about your own body. And there's so many ways to do that. You know, like nowadays we have so many different tests and, you know, even going so far as to knowing what is your genetic profile, like you can, you can test for all of that now. And that's, what's great about what you do, Tiffany, with the functional medicine and having all that available to people to, to be able to test. But, you know, one of the main things too, that, that interferes and may make one person different than the other, and they could be doing the exact same thing is what are they saying to themselves through the process? You know, what story are they telling themselves through this process? Like, I love Peter Crone and he says, we're all a walking story. So what is your story you're saying that you're starting off with? Like, do you have some little demons in your head that maybe came from childhood? Maybe it came from yourself. Maybe it came from society that are saying, oh, you can't do this or you can't get well on your own. You need this pill and you got to be on that drug. And, you know, there's just, it's too much to figure out on your own, but, but we, that's not true. We have our intuition. We have our inner knowing about our own body. It's just a matter of you know, tapping into that and getting quiet enough to listen. Cause like you said, our body will start to tell us and that's what symptoms are, right? It's going to, it's going to get louder and louder and louder until we listen. And unfortunately, some people do get the point to the point of, you know, a chronic disease or, or cancer or something, because they're not pausing to listen. Yes. And I, I understand too, there is some, pre, you know, genetic predisposition, predisposition to some of this. However, our lifestyle and sometimes even our mindset and thoughts can be the, the key that turns on that genetic predisposition, right? Right. And we know that, you know, through epigenetics and, you know, Bruce Lipton is another doctor that talks a lot about this. Actually, I'll share, he's got this great little video. And uh, because we know that we can have that genetic predisposition, but the environment influences it. So that means that we can shape it and shift it. And that, when I even realize that myself, it's like, we can change our genetics. We you know, sure we can, can change our bodies, you know, like we're turning over our cells all the time. We're remodeling, we're getting new skin, we're getting new digestion, we're getting new bones. Yeah. And, and the thought of that is like, so what the body that I was born with, that is my history, but it doesn't have to be my future. I right? love that. That's great. That's a great quote. Um, and when you talk though about intuition, uh, Becky, maybe just speak a little bit on that because I think with women, we are so, we've been so bombarded with the way we should be. And so, and you know, you and I have spoken a lot about this is, you know, paying attention to that little voice, you know, that is inside us. And as we start to listen, how do you feel that, you know, women and men, but we have, I think mostly women here tonight, how can they really start to tap more into that intuitive sense of listening and eating? What do you think? Well, there's a lot of ways your body gives you like, you know, we're, we're an electrical current really. So our body gives us messages and, you know, feeling into, you know, if you're about to eat something and you get a weird feeling in your stomach, or you have a feeling of, um, or your heart starts fluttering, or, you know, it can just be a little tiny thing. But if you, if you, if you get to know your body enough, you can start really tapping into and feeling that intuition. And I also believe it's, it's 
it comes with kind of knowing that you are an infinite soul in this world. You're not just this, like they say a lot now, this meat suit, you know, we have, we have this body, but we also have a soul that's running this body, a consciousness. And when we're able to kind of, you know, tap into that and whatever that looks like for you, um, it could, it could just be reading something spiritual daily. It could be prayer. It could be meditation. It could be God. It could be the universe, whatever, however you get to that space. It's knowing that you are an infinite soul and we are whole all the time, no matter what our body's doing. Right. And we can always come back to that wholeness by, by tapping in and, and working on ourselves and working on our stories and our mindsets and, and yeah, there is that whole physical part too of the food and, and, and the nurturing we're, we're giving our bodies and how we're building the cells in our bodies and things like that. But I think most women on here probably have had some kind of intuitive sense at some point in their life, you know, like it can have to do with our kids too. Like where we, you know, felt like we got a bad feeling about our kid going to this party or doing this thing. And we, we, you know, we ended up being right or, or sometimes it even can come to you in dreams where you almost get like a premonition, but it's, it's really that gut feeling. It really comes either from the heart center or the gut, I think are the, are the two places that you really start to feel kind of some kind of a, a twinge of maybe, maybe that's not right. Or maybe I need to go in a different direction. So, yeah, but it, it does take a little bit of, you know, getting quiet with yourself and, and, you know, being able to tap into that. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me through the years, as I've been, you know, we're all learning, right. I'm 51 now. And uh, I remember those times that I didn't listen to that gut feeling. And I think as women too, sometimes if we don't have that role model, or if we don't have someone there to guide us, you know, whether it's the, the mother, your big sister, or some group of women, you know, we often think that that can't be right, that gut feeling, because we, we, we don't we don't even know that it really exists. You know, we right. and we don't feel comfortable trusting it because so many times we see that the world is telling us what to do. But I know now when I look back at my life, this, you know, when I didn't follow that gut feeling, boy, yeah. I could have saved myself a lot of years of of difficulty but, especially but, when it comes to men right <laughs> <laughs> and so many things you know and following you know kind of work you know I've worked in many different places but just knowing that that's okay to feel that way and then as you start to trust it then it becomes more comfortable yeah. and then you start to feel a little bit more familiar with your body and then the body can give you more and more signals too right mm. I, I, I've also learned with a lot of my clients too, that a lot of women are disassociated from their body. Like we're not in our bodies. We're so much in our head, which also of course has to do with mindset, right? We're so much in our head that we, yes, we, we can feel the symptoms when they get to be bigger and stronger, but we aren't like connected to our bodies and we really need to come back into our bodies. And, and that's just our society, right? We're just, we're just inundated with information and our phones and television and traffic and jobs and all the things. And, and so it's not surprising that we're in our, in our, in our head a lot. So, you know, just doing things to like kind of ground yourself and come back to yourself and even, you know, getting massages and getting energy work and things that are going to move things through and, and, you know, acupuncture, all those things can help you really come back into your body. But even doing massage on yourself. Like that's what Ayurveda does. They do, they do self massage every day, you know, having a nice warm bath and, you know, just paying attention to, you know, closing your eyes. What am I feeling? Am I having any aches and pains? Where what's, what's it telling me? Just things like that. So that, that's a huge thing too. I'm seeing a lot in society is this like disassociation. I remember like, and I see this all the time, you know, people come in and, and I was there, right? And so that's why I know. And the term we use in mindfulness is automatic pilot, that you're just on autopilot. So you wake up. And I remember when I first, you know, moved here to Bermuda, I was working at the emergency room. You wake up in the morning, you get the coffee, you drink it quickly, you're kind of out the door, maybe grab a little something to take with you in the car, you go to work, it's busy, 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 you come home, you make supper, 
And it's like the day goes by and then there's no moments of pause. Yeah. And, and I talk to so many women in particular, and but men as well, but it's like, you know, they wake up in the morning and it's just 24 seven, like they're just gone. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, at the beginning of this challenge, I was encouraging people to ground at least their morning. Because when we get grounded in the morning, and maybe people can share after, I might ask about if they're doing any grounding practice. Because when you start your day in a space of calm, then you can then make decisions about the rest of your day. You don't have to constantly just go and you're in that reactive mode all the time. Absolutely. That's right. So you can be more in a proactive mode instead of a reactive mode. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I just thought of something when you were saying that, dang it. Um, Oh, and that was the other thing too, with this whole process is when you have this on and you're more aware, you're more aware of, oh, I actually am hungry right now. My stomach is growling for a reason, you know, and putting those pieces together where sometimes, or maybe you're not, maybe you're, you're just, your blood sugar is going down and your body's having a bit of a reaction, but you're not necessarily, it's not really time to eat yet. But feeling these sub subtle changes, it's just so interesting. So I found that really, really cool too, to, to kind of know like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be eating at this time of day, right? It, you know, we're told, oh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, maybe that doesn't work for your body. Maybe you only need two meals a day, you know? And that's actually, you know, so my underlying, one of the things that I wanted this to do was to try to bring us back in touch with our body right? So yes, I'm wearing an electronic device on the back of my arm, but it was really to try to get people, you know, for two weeks now we've been at it, we're paying attention. So it's not just the food, you're right. It's looking for the signals. It's looking for the hunger. It's like, what do I really want? What is the choice that I'm making? Because when you have to write down in your food diary, what you're eating, then you're going to be thinking, oh, is this nurturing my body or is this depleting my body? So is, was, so I was trying to get people to connect those dots together. Um, and I'm hoping, I think from what I, what's been happening the past two weeks, it's really been an eye opener for a lot of folks. For sure. And I, 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 I'll admit I had some chocolate yesterday and I did not feel the same about that chocolate as I have in the past. Like, yes, it tasted just as good, but I did not feel good after eating it. Like I, I, I really noticed how much I did not feel good. And I don't know if it was just, you know, I was kind of beating myself up a little and there was a little of the guilt because I'm wearing this and now I know what it's going to look like in an hour, you know, or maybe 30 minutes even, but, um, it just, it, it just really changed something really shifted. So I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. And it's how we, what we think about it. Right. And so, like we've said before, uh, I work with a health coach um, and, you know, we talk about, you know, you can have chocolate or you can have organic broccoli, but if you, if you absolutely despise organic broccoli, it's still, it's probably not going to have the best impact in your body. So we do want to eat things that nourish us. Now, if we're having potato chips, like most of us would agree that we know that's not the best thing for our body, but maybe we we're at a birthday party. We want to have a little bit of cake. Well, it's like, okay, it's a birthday party. I'm going to have a little slice of cake at the end of my meal. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's, it's the mindset too. Like, I'm glad you brought that up. It's how we think about that food that's going to go into us. And if we're using it as a reward versus, you know, it's just a part of my lifestyle and yes, it's okay to have food that tastes really good, but it's the, it's almost like intention, Becky. So if our intention with the chocolate is to relieve ourselves because we're feeling hungry, angry, lonely, tired, then that's probably not the right reason to reach for that chocolate. But if you're out and you're having a little chocolate dessert at the end of a meal and you're socializing with your friends, then that's a different intention behind it as well. Yeah, and an interesting thing I learned in my training was um, kind of the energy of these things, right? Because we've heard about it with like, you know, eating animals and you know, the state of how, what happens to them when they, they're, you know, being, I don't even want to talk about the whole thing, but you know, the energy of that animal as it's dying and, you know, we're putting that potentially putting that energy into our body of that animal at its last moments. Also a chef who is angry and cooking our food in a restaurant 
they're going to, we're going to kind of have that energy of that in there. So it's the same thing when you're eating something, it's everything's energy. So if you're sitting there eating a piece of cake and you're beating yourself up and putting this in and you're also your stress hormones are then starting to kick in because you're beating yourself up mentally, then that's going to be a whole different experience versus, oh my gosh, this is such a great treat. This is going to taste so amazing. And you're really mindful. You're in the moment. You're tasting it. You're chewing. You're appreciating it. That's a whole different ballgame. Your body's going to respond to it in a whole different way. So that has a lot to do with mindset too, but the whole mindfulness piece, right? Of being aware of what we're putting in our body. Yeah, it's just, it's an eye opener when you begin to notice it. It really is an eye opener. Yep. So I think we'll, let's open things up here a little bit because I